Just before Christmas, an honest politician, a generous lawyer, and Santa Claus all got into the same elevator at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in New York. As the elevator got from the fifth floor down to the ground floor, one by one, they noticed a $100 bill lying on the elevator's floor. Guess who picked up the $100 bill and handed it in at the reception? Of course, it was Santa Claus, because the other two, honest politician and generous lawyer, don't actually exist. All right, so it's time I have to confront all of you people here. Ever since toy manufacturing companies moved to Asia, it's been very difficult here on the North Pole. Unemployed elves keep knocking on my door every morning, hurling insults at me. What am I supposed to do? These elves aren't even elves anymore. These elves are like zombies. They don't get anything right. You give them one job, they won't be able to do it correctly. But I've still hired a few of them to help me with my other errands. Have you ever imagined how tough you have made my life? Let's not even go to the part where I have to carry a world of gifts in one bag. But much simpler than that. Just imagine how much junk food I have to eat to maintain this look. I haven't shaved in over a year. These curls don't happen themselves. If you didn't know, the North Pole doesn't have a salon where I can get clip-on extensions or something. I have to grow this jungle out over the whole year. Huh, maybe that's why I'm single. Back to what I was saying, elves on the North Pole are of no help. But you have to understand how important elves are. On Christmas Eve, I have to make my way to China and pick up my gifts from my Chinese elves, and then go around the world to distribute them to you in a couple of hours before the sun rises. And what have you provided me with to deliver all these gifts? A U-Haul truck and a cargo plane. No. Reindeers. Reindeers and a sleigh that I don't even fit in anymore. How will I carry the gifts? And let me tell you, reindeers are the least confident of all bird species. You have to counsel each one of them for a whole year before you can take them out. I don't get their problem. They seem to have an issue with self-esteem. I end up having to fill them with energy drinks before the big night. They just don't want to acknowledge the fact that they can fly. What I think is that the fact that they're really birds but just the ugly duckling of all bird species just hasn't dawned on them yet. Rudolph here was looking into the mirror the other day and was like, Santa, are you sure I'm not adopted? And after that tiresome night of hauling 10 tons of gifts, what do I get paid? If you weren't aware yet, your happiness won't pay for the junk food I'm going to have to eat before next year. And now let's talk about business. At first, the chimneys weren't at all big enough. You people even leave the fireplace burning hot. Every time I come out of each house, I have to rub my bottom on the snow. But these days, the houses don't even have chimneys, which is good and bad. The windows are definitely big enough for me. But have you seen what the people have started to post on the net? Videos like raccoon entering my house. One time when I tried getting in through the window like a raccoon, the people mistook me for an intruder and almost pawned me into raccoon mincemeat. You won't find that part in the video though. That night was a long night. They handed me over to the police. Fortunately, I shared the cell with a very kind man. He was a fan of my work. He wanted to learn the art. He said if I teach him how I got into all of the houses, he would show me a secret exit. What a convenient hole in the wall of the cell. We got out together. He helped me a lot. Took half the load of gifts to deliver. Good man. He was a believer. Then there was a time when I slid down the chimney of this house. I found cookies on the table. I was happy. At least someone was appreciating the hard work. And then I find this note. Dear Santa, if you leave your debit card under the tree, I'll give you the antidote to the diarrhea that you will have after eating those delicious cookies. Trying to rip me off, huh? Good try, Dad. But guess who's standing next to your safe in the middle of the night while you sleep? Who's the fool now? Ho, ho, ho. What's next on the list? Ah, yes, your kids. When one sibling gets a better gift, the other one starts screaming and throwing a tantrum. Listen, there's nothing I can do for you. If your brother or sister knows what to ask for in their letter and you don't, it's not my fault. Get your paperwork done by a professional, kid. And I have to tell you this, don't leave everything up to Santa. This job is difficult as it is, 
And on top of that, if I have to go through all of these letters and pick the right gift for every person, I'll never make it on time. Let me tell you something that happened. There was a family with twins. The twins were completely opposite though. One was an optimist and the other was a pessimist. I've got to say, it was fun to try them out. But I can't let time pass like this. A few hours and it will be sunrise. I filled the optimist's room with a whole load of reindeer manure. And the pessimist's room with a load of gifts. When I came back later that night, I found the pessimist crying. When no one was looking, I hopped in through the window and asked him why. The pessimist said, Because I have to read all these instructions before I can do anything. And I'll constantly need batteries, and these aren't even of good quality. Eventually, all my toys will be broken. I was like, Listen kid, you're right. I got the toys from China. But you don't need to whine about it. They'll run good for a week. After that, I climbed the wall along the plumbing to the optimist's room. And this is hard work when you weigh 300 pounds, by the way. The optimist was dancing in the reindeer manure. I called him from the window. What in the world are you happy about? The optimist said, I'm sure you left me a reindeer in here. To be honest, I was worried. Uh, just don't eat it, alright? Like things weren't difficult for me already. And now I have to deal with children like this. The real issue, however, started last year. Some of the out-of-work elves managed to bushwhack my house with toilet paper and hot water. As if the North Pole wasn't melting already. I applied for asylum in the USA. But even after a personal interview, they keep sending me letters informing me that I don't exist. I mean, who did they think they were sending that letter to? Listen people, all I'm asking you is let me live my life. Let me lose a few pounds, live in the city, maybe start sending you people gifts through the mail instead, okay? This isn't someone trying to impersonate Santa. I was staying at the Ritz Carlton. I met these two men there. They'd tell you they saw me. This is a Christmas crisis. Share this video with everyone before Christmas Eve. I am Santa Claus and I need your help.